Yeah, what's up is your teacher that the course will be looking at the properties of water, both physical and chemical properties of water, as well as the anormal laws, the abnormal or the unusual properties of water. Let's talk about the physical properties of water. Number one, we want to know that water is colorless, is old, is odorless, and is tasteless when the water is very pure. Then, pure water is a liquid at room temperature. Water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius, that's 373 Kelvin, and freeze at 0 degrees Celsius, that's 273 Kelvin. The density of water is 1 gram per cm cube. That is, 1 gram of water is equal to 1 centimeter cube of water at 4 degrees Celsius. Then, water is neutral to litmus, is a neutral oxide. Let's talk about the chemical reactions of water. What are the chemical properties of water? Now, let's talk about the reaction of water with metals. When water reacts with metals, different products are obtained based on the reactivity of those metals. So let's consider group 1 metals first. When water reacts with group 1 metals, they always generate hydrogen gas as well as leave behind an alkaline solution for example you can see sodium a group one element when it reacts with water it forms sodium hydroxide as an alkali and liberates hydrogen gas this is the reason why we call group one element alkali metals because they react with water to form an alkali solution basic solution a solution that turns blue litmus uh, red litmus paper blue and can also see the case of potassium also gives you koh and hydrogen calcium also do the same thing but uh at a very slow pace anyway you understand that there's a very slow pace so it appears that uh the more reactive the metal the more vigorous the reaction as you can see in the picture that is here and check out this picture you will see that Potassium reacts violently with water. You can see that potassium reacted violently with water. Sodium reacted vigorously. You will see a flame under sodium. Uh, inside sodium, the something with sodium. Then look at lithium in this place. Uh, there's no flame there, but the reaction is still a kind of a, a serious, a little bit uh, vigorous. So you will see that. The higher the reactivity of the metal, the more vigorous their reaction with water. With water, so you can see that K reacts explosively, sodium reacts vigorously, and lithium reacts exothermically. Now, if you see uh, the one for calcium, calcium reacts with cold water very slowly. In fact, in bubbles only. It's a jam question. It reacts with waters with water in bubbles only producing bubbles slow slowly 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 the reason is because calcium is not as reactive as the other members of uh, as the other alkali members calcium is an alkali half metal so you can see the general reaction here that metal will react with water to produce hydroxide and liberate hydrogen gas so that's for group one metals so let's see the Let's see other metals, how they react with water. Now, uh, metals like magnesium, aluminum, and zinc, we call them moderately reactive metals. They are, they are not as reactive as group 1 elements. So, they do not react with cold water. Cold water is too unreactive for them. So, you have to raise the temperature of the water to get a quick reaction. So, magnesium will react with hot water as well as aluminium as well as zinc but none of these substances will react with cold water because their reactivity is very very low now another thing is when they react with water they don't produce hydroxide like we have for alkali metals instead they produce oxide of the metals and liberate hydrogen gas see what i'm talking about now look at magnesium in this place 
when it reacts is for magnesium oxide all like the group one element that forms hydroxide see sodium forms sodium hydroxide because it's a very reactive metal but after calcium after calcium which is a the other elements like magnesium aluminium zinc those elements do not form hydroxide they form oxide like aluminum also form oxide like zinc also forms oxide so but they all liberate hydrogen gas so let's look at a, uh, the other metal that are even less reactive they are less reactive than um magnesium aluminum and zinc iron is that metal iron iron is quite unreactive compared to those metals so iron will not even react with water whether it is cold or it is hot before the iron can react with metal uh, with water rather the water must be heated to become steam now when the water becomes steam even the iron itself have to also be heated to become red have you seen a red dot iron before like the one uh the weather always use uh -huh. so you must heat iron to that redness before it can react with water in the gaseous phase that is react with steam so iron reacts with uh steam to give us iron iron oxide and hydrogen i actually it's iron three of uh, iron three oxide iron three oxide with hydrogen but this reaction also is possible fio and hydrogen sometimes it can be fe3o4 and hydrogen so uh that is what happens you liberate hydrogen gas but a very rare condition at a very stringent condition that the iron is red hot and the water is a gas that is when iron can react with water to liberate hydrogen gas now other metals that are lower than iron in the electrochemical series don't forget we have been, we have been following those metals from potassium to sodium those are electrochemical series now after iron metals like copper mercury silver and gold does not react with water in any form either in the vapor state or in the liquid state or in the solid state water doesn't react with copper mercury or silver as well as gold so that's how it reacts so you can go through what i have in this place is a summary of the reaction of those elements sodium reacts very fast with cold water sometimes there's a there's explosion potassium reacts explosively with cold water calcium reacts readily you should take note of those adjectives that is what is very important in this place calcium readily with cold water and uh slowly also zinc zinc doesn't react with cold water at all but the zinc when it is hot can react with steam to produce zinc oxide iron iron must be red hot you heat the iron to redness and then it, it reacts slowly with steam it just loads slowly with steam, with uh, steam silver doesn't react with water we have said that as well as copper under any kind of condition so uh take note of that so that's a summary you can also go through you can pause the video and go through so let's move on to the reactions of uh water with oxides of metals what do you call uh, what do you call the oxides of metal you call them bases isn't it uh -huh. so uh oxides of group one element they can dissolve in water to form hydroxide that's alkali so you, like you can see in this place sodium oxide yeah reacted with water to form sodium hydroxide as well as potassium oxide also forms potassium hydroxide so it's common to group one metals the other oxides of metals are mostly insoluble in water so these reactions you may not be able to get 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 it because they will not even dissolve in the water in the first place but the, but the others of group one metals 
are very soluble so they react to form hydroxide now let us see how water reacts with oxides of non-metals of course what are oxides of non-metals you call them acid and hydride acid and hydride there are others of non-metal we call them acidic oxide or acid and hydride what do they do acidic oxide dissolve in water to form an acid like co2 is, a, is, is acidic oxide so it, it has other form h2co3 so2 also is acidic oxide so2 form h2so3 remember no2 no2 is a mixed acid and hydride or mixed anhydride meaning that when it dissolves in water it forms mixtures of two acids hno2 and hno3 so this is the behavior of oxides of non-metal which we call acidic oxide when they dissolve in water so the next uh, reaction is hydrolysis reaction I taught you hydrolysis under salt. If you have forgotten, go back to my video on salt, reactions of salt with water, and check hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is a, is a reaction whereby salt reacts with water to form acidic or basic solution. You might be surprised that you dissolve some salt in water. You know that they are salt, they are not acid, that they are not basic. But when you dissolve them in water, they are going to uh, give you solution that is characteristics of an acid or a base that is the solution may react with acid uh, with with uh you will put litmus inside that, that solution and it will be turning red whereas it's not an acid it's a salt or you put litmus inside the solution and it will turning blue whereas it's not a base it's a salt so that is what you call hydrolysis what happened is that these salts they reacted with water to form either an acidic solution or a basic solution. How does that happen? If you need more explanation, go to my video on salt and see how it happens. But I will try and tell you one or two things again here while we move on. This Na2CO3 reacts with water. So just cut it like this. You remember if I say cut it. <laughs> so let's see what happens here. So this Na2O3. So when you when you dissolve them in water, they will be broken down in water. So sodium will pick up OH. Do you remember? Why CO3 will pick up H? This is water. OH and H is water. So you are going to have sodium hydroxide. That's giving you this. And H2CO3 because the percentage of valencies co3 is 2 h is 1 so that will be h2co3 so here now you are forming a strong acid and a weak base sorry you are forming a strong alkali or a strong base and a weak acid h2co3 is a weak acid so the solution will behave like an alkali because it's having a strong alkali so that is why that's how, uh, so that's what we call hydrolysis see another example aluminum chloride the same thing cut the salt into two put oh close to the metal side and put h close to the non-metal side so you'll be having aluminum hydroxide aloh3 you know why this aloh3 al has a valency of three oh has a valency of one so exchange the valency you get aloh3 then the remaining part is HCl. HCl. So ALOH3 is a weak base. Why HCl is a strong acid? So what do you think? Would the solution be acidic or basic? Definitely it will be what acidic because the acid is a stronger component and the base is the weaker component. So the stronger component usually dominates. So the solution will be acidic. Acid is to turn blue limit part to red now you, you can guess what you are going to expect from this last equation i would leave you to answer the question by yourself this is ammonium chloride cut it ammonium chloride so put oh near this one 
and put H in the other one. So you can see how we got NH4OH, which is called aqueous ammonia, then plus HCl. Tell me, will it be acidic solution or an alkali solution? Why will your answer be like that? So, so this is what is called salt hydrolysis. When salt dissolve in water, to form either an acidic solution or a basic solution. So, but when the salt dissolve in water to form a strong acid and strong base, then that solution will neither be acidic nor basic, which means that the solution does not hydrolyze in water. So, salt that are formed from strong acid and strong base do not usually hydrolyze. Salt like sodium chloride, salt like NaCl, in water you expect NaOH and HCl. If you put OH here and you put HCl here, you expect NaOH and HCl. NaOH is a strong base, HCl is also a strong acid. So, they are both strong, strong. Nobody is dominating in this place. So the salt will not hydrolyze in water. Will not hydrolyze in water. So uh, we are going to end the class here. So God bless you. The class is over.